Welcome back everyone, it's Garland here bringing you another Neverwinter video. Uh, in today's video topic we're going to be discussing the brand new event, the Festival of Lanterns. So if we scroll over and look at it, it's the Feast of Lanterns, it lasts seven days long. And we're going to go ahead and look at the rewards and see what we got going on here. Now, during this event, they did introduce a new companion, which you can only buy off the auction house. So let's go ahead and take a look at him first. So we have the Yojimbo companion. It's going to cost you 2,500 Zen. You're going to get Bonding Runestone rank 7, as well as the companion. So let's go ahead and take a look at this companion more in depth. It is an offensive companion. It has three offensive slots, and the equipment is going to be Ring, Ring, Sword Knot. So keep that in mind when you want to compare that to, uh, theoretically, what's best in slot right now would be the Shulton Tiger. Uh, you're going to sacrifice the, necro the Necklace slot for a Sword Knot slot with this. Now if we go ahead and look at his statistics, it increases your deflect chance by 4%. Whenever you take damage, your damage dealt is increased by 4%, and your deflect chance is reduced by 4% for 10 seconds. So let's compare this again to the Shulton Tiger. Uh, the Shulton Tiger is still theoretically going to be best in slot. However, this companion is a good alternative uh, if you never had the opportunity to get the Shulton Tiger for whatever reason, you just don't want the Shulton Tiger. Now, essentially, uh, when you have this up, you're going to have deflect uh, by 4%. But as soon as you get hit, that deflect is going to go away, and you're going to get a damage increase by 4%. Now, the Shulton Tiger is 5%, and I believe it lasts 13 seconds, whereas this is 4%, and it lasts for 10 seconds. Now, the only reason that we're even going to compare this to the Shulton Tiger as this new companion does actually have the 10% uh, debuff on it for 16 seconds. So this go along the lines of your Cell Sword, Rebel Mercenary, Con Artist, and Shulton Tiger. This companion does have a 10% debuff on it. Now what's interesting is also in its skill set here is whenever you take damage, the Yojimbo teleports to your location and deflects 25% of that damage. This effect may not exceed 80% of your maximum hit points, and this can only occur once every 20 seconds. So depending on the interactions in the game and whether or not this is actually worthwhile, it's going to, be, it's going to come down to personal preference on whether or not you want to run this companion. Uh, if you're a tank, maybe. Uh, or if you're a pure DPS and you want that extra 1% from the Shulton Tiger, uh, it all depends on this. So with the 25% deflect chance, yeah, it's decent. Uh, like I said, especially if you're a tank, you're going to be getting hit nonstop anyway. So it's basically down to personal preference on how you're playing your character and what class you are. Also introduced is two new hairstyles, if anyone actually cares about fashion. Uh, <laughs> and they're going to run you 700 Zen each. So for the Mel, we have the sword, Swordsman's Knot hairstyle. And then for the females, we have the Oxhorn's hairstyle. So that's the three items coming out of the Zen store. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the event items overall here. So first up, we have the Boar Schult, uh, which is a new companion as well. Uh, at green, it's going to give you 750 armor pen. I'm assuming at epic quality, it's going to actually give you 1500 armor pen. So if you want to make up some statistics for whatever reason, now you have the opportunity to gain uh, most likely 1500 armor pen at epic. Now this is going to cost you 12 of the boar coins uh, and we'll soon find out that the boar coins are the daily currency you can get two a day so keep in mind the event lasts seven days that's a total of 14 boar coins if you do the daily quest every day so theoretically everyone should be able to obtain this item unless you miss multiple days now this item is the only item from the event uh, that's actually unbound so you can 
actually sell this on the auction house if you so choose. If you don't want it, uh, after you get it, you can sell it down the road. That's completely up to you. Also, we have a new mount skin, which is the New Year's Boar, and it's going to cost you 200 of the other currency, which is going to be the Lunar Coins. The Lunar Coins are the currency that you're going to be farming uh, non-stop, basically. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And it's nothing special. It's literally a boar skin, and it has some Chinese um, saddle-looking mahogany thing on it. So, there you go. If you're into that, there you go. Now, we have some New Year's, New Year's fireworks we don't care about. And then finally, we have two new event food that are actually going to be best in slot from here on out. We have the mochi and the whatever this is. Uh, the niango, maybe? I don't know. Sorry, I don't speak Chinese or Mandarin or any of that. Uh, so if we look at the mochi, it is going to be best in slot from here on out. You're also going to notice that this is character bound. You will not be able to buy these down the road. You will have to farm as many as you plan on wanting. So for six lunar coins each, uh, increase your power by 3,200 and your maximum hit, po hit points by 6,000. Um, Actually, I think this is higher than this. We'll have to verify that and look on my Warlock. I don't know why it's lower on my DC. Uh, but the power should actually increase to 3,800 power. And I believe the H point, the HP is actually uh, 8,000. But it doesn't matter because this gives HP and power. Uh, previous to this, I believe we only had the Sorbet. I'm not sure if I have any Sorbet on this character. <laughs> I do actually have some Sorbet on this character. So if we look at the Sorbet, uh, it's going to give you power recovery. Well, this new item is actually going to give you HP as well. So that, that's going to make it best in slot. You're going to gain power plus hit points. You're going to need that extra hit points for, of course, Aura of Courage. And then, of course, its counterpart is going to be Critical Strike and Deflection. Uh, we don't really, I personally don't necessarily care about crit strike and deflection. If you want to use this for PvP, that's completely up to you. But the mochi, uh, I would definitely farm as much of this as you can as you're going to get the power HP. Alright guys, and this event overall is very lackluster. Uh, it's very quick to do this. So we are in Protector's Enclave, which has a Chinese New Year's theme going on. And you're going to go to the normal event NPC, and that's where they are located. So you're going to go ahead and simply talk to the Festival Crier, and this will start your tutorial down the event path here. So it's not very hard. You'll talk to these people very quickly, learn about the festival. And then they will give you the initial quest. The guy on the right is going to be the fireworks mortars, which are at the Hall of Justice. So go ahead and accept this. And then the gentleman in the middle is going to be the red envelopes. So go ahead and accept that. And then let's go ahead and work on the first quest of the fireworks. So the fireworks are very easy. There's four mortars that you're going to have to ignite. So go up to the Hall of Justice. And these should be static locations. They're not going to change. So there are basically four corners. So you will load this one here. Run across to the other side. And there's the other one right here. And then the last two are on the very top up here, which are right next to each other. So here's number three. And then finally, again, number four is right across from that one. Once you have all of those lit, it's going to ask you to go and watch the fireworks show. So simply just run down the stairs a little bit. Go to the gathering of people that's right here in the middle. There should be some sparklies right here for you to engage with. And then you'll simply just go ahead and watch the fireworks go off. So that is your first daily quest. As you can see, it is now complete. The next daily quest is going to be the red envelopes. 
and you have to find four people in the enclave. So the first one is going to be right down here, which I believe is the combatant. So he's right here. Give him the gift. The second one is going to be the fledgling buyer, which he's going to be over by Lady Bubblegum or in the auction district. So run across the enclave here to the auction district. Right here is the fledgling buyer. Go ahead and turn that in. And then we have the fledgling retainer. Or I'm sorry, the fledgling dungeoneer, which is going to be right next to the sill merchant. So go ahead and turn that in. And then finally we have the fledgling retainer, which should be up by the sage shop. So go ahead and run over to the sage shop, which I'm horrible at. I missed it. I went down the wrong path. La di da da. And right here is the refiner that is right outside the sage shop. So go ahead and turn those in. Those are your two daily quests. Go ahead and run back to complete those. And then once you complete the round of tutorial quests, they become daily quests, which you can do from what I've seen uh, infinitely. You can farm this infinitely from here on out. So go ahead. And turn these in. That will give you two boar coins total for your daily boar coins. And then they just want you to look at the shop. And there you go, guys. Now there is a third quest as well that I'm particularly not fond of. But it is uh, petting dogs or something, I believe. Which I have yet to be able to trigger. I don't know if we're going to be able to trigger on this guy. Um, yeah, there is supposedly a third quest. And I'm not exactly sure how you trigger it. But it's about petting the dogs. So anyway, once you finish those tutorial quests, you will get the daily quests to come up. And they are essentially the same thing. So it's load the firework mortars again. And that's going to reward you five lunar coins. And then you can do the red envelopes quest again multiple times for seven coins. And you can, like I said, farm that legitimately uh, forever. And definitely until the event ends. There's no stopping. Uh, from what I've seen so far, you can literally just keep doing these over and over and over again until you are completely satisfied with whatever items you are currently farming. So it does take 240 of that currency to get the mount skin. And then simply if you want to just keep buying event food, that's up to each and every individual on how much event food they're going to want to go ahead and farm. So that is going to end the video guys. If you guys have any questions regarding the Feast of the Lanterns event, this is a brand new event in the game. So of course we have a guide on it now as I like to do. If you guys have any questions, please be sure to leave me a comment below. Go ahead and thumbs up the video or thumbs down the video. Of course it doesn't matter to me. Uh, if you're new here, remember to hit that subscribe button as it does help me out. And we will see you guys in the next video.